So, now this instrument has, you want me to just keep talking about it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job. Okay, well, so, this one, um, um, it has this thing called a transposing keyboard. So, do you see this little block here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if I can take that block up, I can slide the keyboard over and then put this block on this side. And the reason you might do that is that um, it basically, instead of this key plucking this string, if I slid it over, it would be plucking one over. Yeah. And so it transposes the pitch of each key down a semitone or one half note. Okay. And the reason you do that is because um, modern A is 440 hertz, but in the historic um, you know, in the time this instrument was built, it would have been four, around 415 hertz, which is one semitone down. So if you want, you can play in the pitch okay. that it would have originally been built for. Wow. So that's how the transmitting keyboard. And then there's another funny little thing here called a short octave, which is they wanted, this is not the size of a full piano keyboard. It has 88 keys, and this I think has 54 or 55. So sometimes they would write music and they kind of wanted to go a little farther down. Uh -huh. And so what they did was they said, well, let's just pick a few of the most common notes that are below where we were and steal them from notes that aren't as frequently used. So normally if you go up from, from B, you go. But this is what this one does. Well, actually, it's, it's not always going up. It's going right. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So, yeah. So here we go. Um, yeah. That okay. always goes up, right? So there are three notes that are reassigned yeah. to where the, beyond the reach yeah. of the, uh -huh. the bass side of the, of the um, instrument. So wow. um, that's it. I mean, this, so this instrument was copied from one that was built in 1584 by Hans Mormons. Wow. Um, in, um, he was one of the, he wasn't one I'm of the more famous. I'm just going to pass this along here. So that we can see. Yeah, so I finished this in Lexington, Mass. I started it in Cupertino, California. So I just tuned it, and my, my way of tuning is like a real hack. I just, <laughs> I just use an app, and it tells me like if, the, is yeah. it, if this is a B, is it the right, is it the right frequency or not? Yeah. Right. Um, the real piano tuners are much more sophisticated. You know, they do it by ear. Yeah. So do either one of you play? No, I wish oh, I could. Okay. Well, I, don't, I can't even pick out, uh, you know, to joy probably, but <laughs> 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 this thing here's not so, you know, it's not so portable. I, I can see that, yeah. yeah. You have a hard time taking that out and playing on the street with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's inside, underneath the soundboard. Hey, there's one other interesting little story about this. Uh, if you look at the soundboard, mm -hmm. there's a real thin piece of uh, spruce here. I think it's spruce. And, you know, it... This instrument makes it, the soundboard is basically is what's vibrating and making, it's not so much, I mean the string vibrates, but then it makes the, the sound yeah, it makes vibrate. the wood vibrate. Yeah, and that's what makes the, the, the sound. So I had been going back and forth across the country every time I would move for work, and you know, the half finished, you know, harpsichord, and always need the, the barn or the, or the yeah. garage or something. Yeah. So it started to get a little beat up, and then um, the guy came over to tune the piano, and he was like, I told him about this, and he said, oh, you have to finish it right now. So... He made me go get it out of the barn, set yeah. up some saw horses in the basement, put a tarp yeah. underneath it, and then for that, and then it was I was going. So he was yeah. the guy who really got me on it. Yeah. But I was kind of stumped because the sandboard actually gets a couple of cracks in it. If you look right. closely, yeah, see I can see that. There's one yeah. there and there's one here. Yeah. And it doesn't. It's not beautiful, but it's you can tell it's repaired. Can you right. see how that? Yes. It's the same kind of wood, but it's much, it's 33 years younger, uh -huh. so it stands out. Eventually, it'll blend in. And you won't see that. Right. But that was a really expert repair, and he told me that I didn't have to repair it structurally, and for the sound, it would have been fine. Yeah. But with that, it just made it, you know, more tight. Yeah. It probably was better for the sound, mm -hmm. and it's not beautiful. It's, you know, it's part of the story of this instrument that it was getting, you know, hauled back and forth, and and now it's had its, you know, its little problems sort of sorted out. Yeah. So. Um, so when I was tuning it, I was afraid I was going to break a string or something. Right. Yeah. But they're all good. Uh, I think we need to do a little bit better. It reminds me we need to take care of the humidity in here. Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Do you so. hand make you know all of these pieces in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was um, this instrument was built from a kit from a, a guy named uh, Frank Hubbard who made uh, harpsichords and then he got into making kits. So the keys were cut, for example. Okay. 
um, and the rest in the bent side was bent. But other than that, it was just all the pieces, and you know, okay. so I had to do a lot of cutting and you know, fitting and gluing okay. and clamping and you know, all that yeah. stuff. Um, wow. Yeah. So and there's there's more to and this is uh, this is gold leafed. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I think it's 23 karat gold leaf. Wow. I didn't do the best job, but it's the best. I, you know, everything I was doing here was the first time I tried it. So. Yeah. yeah. If I were to do another one, I think it would be a lot better. Yeah. But I'm yeah. happy. You know, I don't think I'm going to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're done, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got one harpsichord in them. You know? You reckon? I'm going to reach deep and pull that harpsichord out. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, oh, wow. quite the philosophy of life right there. <laughs>